Hello, my name is Cherie Demeline, and I am incredibly honored to be here. Success requires context and definition in order to be recognized, even by itself. And because of this, success is malleable, it's changeable, and it's highly personal. For me, a part of both this context and the definition or naming of success, and there's great power in naming, uh, is cultural. I'm a member of the Métis Nation of Ontario, and as an Indigenous person in what we currently know as Canada, I come from a history and culture of success. We successfully survived attempted genocide. We successfully carried our languages forward. We successfully navigated laws and systems meant to dismantle and diminish us. I have a lot of role models and a history of lessons that I can draw from in order to find and recognize success. One of the most valuable lessons is the one where we create and keep space for ongoing success. My own endeavors and the ways in which I have achieved are because the ground was prepared for me by those who came before. And preparation is ceremony because it involves dreaming of those who aren't yet here and calling them forward. By any measure, I've had a pretty good year, uh, a TV series, four book deal, international festivals, a couple of awards, but I wanted to share with you a highlight that truly and in the best way exemplifies this idea of preparing the ground while also being recognized in a more mainstream way. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was at the University of Toronto. I was the writer in residence for First Nations House. And while there, uh, I met a woman who became a very good friend of mine, Susan Blight. She's uh, from Kuchiching First Nation, Treaty 3. And we were talking about our personal resistance, the ways in which we would resist and thrive within that resistance. And for us, it came down to two things, stories and language. And I said, you know, I am going to go forward and I'm going to write the stories from my community. I'm going to write the stories that my grandmother gifted me, that I learned growing up that are the original teachings. And I'm not going to change them for publishing trends or, or any other reason. These are the stories I, I will carry. And Susan said, and I'll never forget the way she said it, she said, I refuse to die without my language. And Susan's family had been through residential school and displacement and uh, attempted colonization. And so we shook on it, we agreed. I said, I'm gonna go write these stories. And she said, I'm going home and I'm gonna find teachers and I'm gonna find my language. And she did. And uh, I said to her, jokingly, you know, if any of these stories goes anywhere, if I win an award, you have to come and do the acceptance speech completely in Anishinaabe Moen. So she agreed. Well, uh, in November 2017, I won the Governor General's Award for Literature for my book, The Marrow Thieves. Uh, I got the call from the Canada Council. I was in the office that day working uh, for a tribal council group out of Manitoba, um, and they told me that I had won. I may or may not have swore really loud into the phone at the poor woman, um, which then echoed through the office and into a conference call with a bunch of corporate lawyers. Maybe they deserve to hear the word, I don't know. Um, but I hung up from that call and I immediately called Susan and I said, I hope you have a gown. And uh, so in November there we were in our gowns on a bus on the way to Redu Hall. Uh, and she gave that speech completely in Anishinaabe Moan without translation and without apology. And despite being told uh, by the organizers that we might alienate those who were not speakers and that it wouldn't be easy, they didn't really want to do it because it was something that had never been done before, despite that, we did do it. We succeeded. We brought our ancestors with us and we accepted the award with grace and humility and all the power those words brought. We held ceremony for those who will come to speak their language in any house they're invited into, even if it's the house of the queen. For me, the success comes from the right kind of preparation, which is done through living life at its fullest, which is the ceremony and the ways in which we stitch our stories into the ground so that it's level and will provide steady footing and sing them into the sky so that there's more light to see by for all those still on their way. Living should be in every cell, full bank banquet, and with a commitment to excellence and ceremony 
at the same time. The idea of growing, striving, gathering strength, and then achieving, but with the opportunity to add to the circle, to prepare it for the next ones, that's an incredible honor. I often quote Stolo, teacher, writer, and elder Lee Miracle, and I'll do it again now. She is, after all, one of the ones who prepared the ground for me. When we were finishing up work on my first book, she shared with me the necessity of exploring the dark corners in our work while always leaving a window open for the light, that there must always be a way in and a way out. She spoke about this idea of living as hard as you can, as much as possible. And she said, Oh, my girl, my life has been a long, slow journey over very sharp rocks, but God damn it if I didn't dance over every last one of them. This is resistance. This is ceremony. This is success. Jimmy Gretsch.